Hey, everybody. Welcome to Narrative Live, uh, a very special edition of Narrative Live. We had a whole other show planned, but we decided to delay it for, for a day or two. Uh, hey, Tracy McElroy, how are you? I'm great, Zeb. You had not the uh, best day. I, I didn't have the best day, and I think it's okay if we start off the show by me thanking everybody out there on Twitter. As you guys know, we lost a, a family friend, our pet, our little toy poodle, who is 15 and a half, actually. Um, we lost pretty, her pretty today. Decent age. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's a good life. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, this was my mom's pet who, you know, she lives with me. And my daughter has grown up with this little mm -hmm. toy poodle. So it was a little bit of a, a traumatic day for us. But we pushed through. And I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to go go live with you tonight. But here I am, tears gone, little makeup on, hair done, and we're ready to roll. Well, thank you for persevering. Uh, you didn't have to do that, of course. But thank you. And I know how much Sweet Pea meant to everyone in your household, um, especially your mom and, and your and your mini me. So I, you know, and to me, because I've never met him. him. <laughs> uh, but I- uh, Her, Come uh, on now, Sweet Pea. Yeah. You know, it's these days, you never know. Um, so I, uh, I, you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you're persevering. And you know, 15 years is a pretty, not a bad stretch. Yeah, she had a great life. And if it's up to mini me and my mom, there'll be another sweet pea in our future really soon. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> Careful what you wish for, because you know, uh, the Narrative Live Twitter followers are a unique breed of people. Oh, oh and, no. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. No puppies coming my way, <laughs> you no. You puppy arriving by mail. Well, I'm, you know, I'm sorry you had a rough day. Uh, I'm glad you're here, because we were going to get you insights on uh, what was a big story today, uh, which is the release of tapes. You know, we've been going through... Uh, this scandal tape free mm -hmm. and yet every good scandal in politics in the recent past has had a decent tape uh, and this one is uh, is is a big is a big one indeed do you want to tell everyone what it's about sure we uh, had learned through the Mueller report that there was uh, a tape from Donald Trump's personal lawyer Dowd who was representing him in the Mueller investigation and he left a voicemail for one of Flynn's lawyers, and it's quite eye-opening. Sure is. It sure is. So he's talking to uh, Robert Kellner is the name of the lawyer. Uh, it happened way back in November 22nd, 2017. So you have to rewind your mind back to that moment. But it's it's quite startling because you get to hear what could be, it almost sounds like a, a mob lawyer asking someone sure to, to play the game the way the mob boss wants it. Take a listen. Hey, Rob. Um, this is John again. Uh, maybe I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic, I understand your situation, but let me see if I can state it in stronger terms. If you have, well, it wouldn't surprise me if you've gone on to make a deal with, and uh, work with the government, uh, I understand that you can't join a joint defense. That's one thing. If, on the other hand, there are the information that implicates the president, then we've got a national security issue, or maybe a national security issue. I don't know. Some issue we've got to we've got to deal with, not only for the president but for the country. So, uh, you know, then then you know we need some kind of heads up. Uh, just for the sake of protecting all all interests, if we can, without you having to give up any confidential information. So, um, and if it's the former, then you know. Remember what we've always said about the president when he's feeling toward Flynn. You know that still remains, but in any event. Um, let me know, and uh, I appreciate your listening and taking the time. Thanks, Paul. That is so warm and fuzzy, right? I mean, that's the kind of <laughs> yeah. The you thanks, get. pal. Just the thanks, pal. At the end, just just got me. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, right out of uh, Goodfellas, I guess. It feels like that to me, and I'm not sure if this is the way Donald Trump does business. I suspect it is, and it has been since Roy Cohn was his lawyer way back when, but. Um, He's very litigious, as many people know, but he also likes to just play the system, work the system to the very extreme, you know, even if he knows he's got a losing case. 
what troubles me so much in everything that we've seen here is there's a pattern of um, criminal intent and criminal activity where they're obstructing justice, they're tampering with witnesses, they're suborning perjury. It's become okay, I guess. People are expecting, are saying it's okay if, if we don't hear the full story from all these uh, co-conspirators that the president has. Yeah, and this tape, it's just, for me, it was totally different than reading mm -hmm. the transcript. You know, we, we talked about it. We came away with one impression, mm -hmm. having read the words on the paper. But listening to them spoken on the voicemail gives you a totally different perspective, in my opinion. It does, because, you know, it matters where people take their pauses. It matters what tone they're using. It's just like text messages. You often don't know in a text message exactly what the person means when they're sending it to you. So the same thing with transcripts. You and I know that well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do this. <laughs> Late at night, when it's been like 12 hours of working on something, and we really know that quite well. So uh, it's actually quite useful maybe to, to strip out some of the, the nice talk on t the beginning and the end, and take a look at the at the shorter bites from inside the so-called something sandwich to see to see exactly what uh, Dowd was trying to tell Michael Flynn via his lawyer. So let's listen to this first clip. It's it's really illuminating. Oh, well, for the president, but for the country. So, uh, that's the wrong one. you know, then that's the wrong one. Then, Even it, it, says the wrong one. it says it's the right Sometimes. one, but it's the wrong one. So, um, how about this one? Let me try that one try more it. time. Do it. Try we can it. do this. We can do this. I'm, I'm sympathetic. I understand your situation, but let me see if I can state it in starker terms. Starker terms. Starker terms. I mean, that's a hell of a term. I've never used it, but uh, I imagine you'd want to use it if you were trying to make a significant point. Yeah. That was not the way I good. the way I hear it, the way I perceive it is. This is my way or the highway. You're you're going to listen to what I have to say. Yeah, and he is speaking on behalf of the president of the United States. This is not something you can just sort of ignore, nor would you ignore anything from the president of the United States. And uh, when it comes in in this blunt fashion, the use of the word "starker," I imagine a jury is going to listen to this at some point and and say this is a clear case of obstruction. This is witness tampering, um, because it goes on to then say, "There's a you know we know what you might you're about to do." We're also going to ask you to break the law while you're doing it. So let's take a look at him describing, uh, listen to him describing the joint defense. Uh, I understand that you can't join joint defense. That's one thing. If, on the other hand, there's information that implicates the president, then we've got a national security issue, or maybe a national security issue, I don't know. Some issue we've got to we've got to deal with. Some issue we've got to deal with, and then you know, basically using the word "but" there to say yes, you've got a joint defense agreement that you're not part of anymore. We're still expecting you to be part of the joint defense, Mister, which means you're exactly. basically going to continue the cover story, even if you don't like it. So we get why you're doing what you're doing, but you play that angle. We're going to insist that you continue to play our side too. And remember those uh, those Twitter DMs that. Uh, Matt Gates was uh, received from Flynn in, in, in April 2018. Uh, exactly. So that would have only been, what, four or five months later. Exactly. And, and Flynn is DMing Matt saying, you know, hang in there, buddy. I mean, he's still appearing to be in those DMs on Trump's side. Very so much it makes so. you wonder, you know, is he, was he, or is he still playing both ends or both sides against the middle? It certainly does look to me like that because, you know, some of the things he was saying to Gates was, you know, this is our, our, our country needs you right now. Keep up the pressure. Keep up the pressure on Mueller. Uh, well, he's cooperating with Mueller. So why is he giving, you know, asking for someone to keep up the pressure on Mueller? It feels to me like these guys were in such a complicated situation where you've got these very powerful figures in, in politics, but also in, you know, in mob culture, in mob in the mob world um, and also foreign governments all possibly pressuring them to say certain things, do certain things. And that's a, an enormous amount of pressure, even against, uh, you know, Robert Mueller and someone um, of the phenomenal credentials that he has. It's a tough choice to make. Some people made a choice, like Michael Cohen. Uh, we landed up in jail for it, you know. Um, others, like Michael Flynn, we'll see what happens. Because this, uh, there's a lot changing in that story today as well, in terms of, um, you know, he's fired his lawyers. 
Yeah, this is, this is a story I can't wait to follow more. Yeah, we're going to have to get into that in a second. But first, let's take a look at, uh, this is a clip we originally heard again before, but we're going to hear it again. It's so good. <laughs> uh, where he's just like, hey, buddy, I just need a heads up. Can you just give us a heads up? Oh, well, for the president, but for the country. So, uh, you know, then, then you know, we need some kind of heads up. So some that, kind that, of... that to me is you need to tell us whatever it is you're telling Mueller so we can get our game plan on. That that That's how I heard that. Yeah. And of course, there really is a difference between national security issues, which is would have been maybe of interest and important for them to hear about. But these aren't national security. In, you know, this is where the national security dovetails exactly with with Donald Trump's criminal background and criminal activity. So you can't expect someone to be giving you that information. But when you're getting it, from the president's lawyer, the president of the United States is calling you up and saying, you're going to give us the heads up, regardless of what you're doing from a legal framework to defend yourself. That is quite stunning to me. And uh, you're pointing out this great uh, clip from um, Mueller himself when he did the press conference last week, uh, which uh, you could tell us about if you want. Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> thought you were going to show it. I was, but uh, I was going to let you. <laughs> well, it started when we read the Mueller report and there was a, a portion in that summary that stated that there were witnesses who refused to cooperate. There were people who destroyed evidence. So, you know, clearly from the beginning, there is something going on in, in a cover-up sense, you know, trying to keep the truth from Mueller. And he, he stated that in his press conference. When a subject of an investigation obstructs that investigation or lies to investigators, it strikes at the core of their government's effort to find the truth and hold wrongdoers accountable. I mean, Mueller is very careful about words. He chooses them very, very carefully. To me, the subject of the investigation I mean, it was Donald Trump, even though he wasn't really the subject because he couldn't get indicted, he really was the subject. So he's actually saying you, the president of the United States obstructed justice. I can't charge him with that. But he is the subject, ultimately, of this entire investigation. And those were some pretty uh, blunt words from Mueller. It must right. have been something. And I also interpret that as meaning other people who were involved, mm -hmm. other witnesses that he wanted to bring forward were obstructing justice as well. I think so. And to me, I think that there is a huge conspiracy. And, you know, this is an opinion. I have nothing to base this on other than you look at the criminal pattern, you look at the facts, you look at what Mala said there, and you, we're beginning to see something, you know, of course there was a conspiracy to, to win the presidency and to tamper with the elections in 2016. We'd be foolish to not believe that there is a conspiracy to also cover up the facts that that crime is not found out. I mean, this is not just one of those, you know, I'm going to rob a bank kind of crimes. This is, took a lot of planning, a lot of people involved. It, it, it was a massive undertaking by whoever took it. Um, so they would have thought about the cover up. They would have thought about what they would have had to say. And they would have exerted enormous pressure on everybody to follow the rules that they've put down. And they probably still are today, which is something I think we all forget about sometimes. We're still in the middle of this. We're not, uh, Absolutely not over right. Because Trump's facing pressures, everyone involved in, in the investigation is facing pressure, the investigators are facing pressure. There is just an enormous buildup of that. So we're still not out of of the of the of the you know the fire, or maybe out of the out of the pan in the fire. Yeah, and what's interesting, I think we have a little clip of the very end of this voicemail as well, is that because it leads me to believe that they're they may be dangling a pardon oh. at the end. Oh yeah, for sure. So, um, and if it's the former, then, you know, remember what we've always said about the president when he's feeling toward Flynn. No, that still remains, but. That still remains. We still, oh, he actually says that it still remains, but it's, it clips off a little bit. Still remains, but we will withdraw that if you. Don't follow our agreement here or our suggestions. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. Is... You tell us what the heck is going on or <laughs> yeah. this will be a totally different story. I we... mean, we also need to remember that Comey got fired over the Flynn thing. You're absolutely right. You know, and there's there is a lot in the Mueller report where yeah, as Flynn is departing office, as he's been fired, 
uh, for misleading the vice president and whatever other reasons they could come up with to justify the fact that they were firing him. Uh, he had a very warm embrace with Donald Trump in the in the Oval Office. Trump promised him he would look after him. And again, possibly a suggestion that there is a pardon coming, uh, that he wouldn't have anything to worry about. And then the very next day, he goes to Comey and says, uh, can you go, because uh, your weights are going lighter. Let, him, the flint, let the flint, let the flint, let the flint thing, go. thing go. I mean, that those are um, all seem to be like the obstruction, but they also seem to me, like in the case of, of, of Dowd's clip over there, that they really are dangling pardons and exerting enormous pressure internally on the FBI, externally on the on the subjects of the investigation and the witnesses of the investigation. And it must it, be happening in, in Congress as well, which is why we it also get tells me that they're really afraid of what Flynn could tell. Yeah, well, the truth is, um, the truth is going to be hard to, to handle for everyone when it finally does come out, because the very little we know, and we still do know, not know everything, is incredibly troubling. You know, we're still in the midst of a of a massive uh, attack, and it's very hard for us to to find our way out of it when we're still all in experiencing the shock of being attacked. Exactly. So, on that point, um, that's all we have tonight, and thank you for joining us. Uh, you can always uh, support our work by going to patreon.com forward slash narrative. From $3 a month uh, or up, uh, you can donate uh, to us, and we're really excited and, uh, and thankful for all of you who have donated. It means a lot to us that we're able to uh, invest all that money back into the product, back into the reporting, and uh, we'll be back in a couple of days. Maybe a day yes, yes. With, the, with the show we were and planning for tonight. Which is I really know, and I, I do need to apologize to everyone. I take responsibility for the shortened show tonight. Uh, it, it took me a bit to, to even get on air, and so I, I appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. It wasn't that short because, you know, we have a, a, a legendary ability <laughs> to keep talking. So, so there you go. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of days. You've been watching Narrative Live. Bye, friends. Our founding fathers drafted a charter to assure the rule of law and the rights of man. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. Those ideals still like the world. We will not give them up for expedience's sake. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountain. Side. America is the land where dreams can come true for all of us. Let me allow freedom ring. Flags of freedom fly all over Europe. Every citizen ever hamlet from every state and every and freedom. We will be able to speed up that day when all the soft children, black men and white men, Jews and thin clouds. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. We are